Right, Rob, I think even before we go into these incidents, yeah. I, I, I admire the courage. I looked at the body language. That young man, every single decision that he gave, every single one of those five, when he gave it, the body language said, I'm sure, I've seen it, I'm giving it. He never got to a stage where I've already given two, let me not give a third one, I've already given three, I can't give a fourth one, I've already given, you know, much more than anybody else has ever given, I can't go to a fifth one. As, as long as he was convinced that there was an infringement, it was inside the box, it was committed by a defender inside his own penalty area, he gave it. Mm -hmm. And we've got to give him credit for that courage. However, let's go ahead and see whether he was indeed correct in awarding those five penalties. And we start with the, with the uh, push against uh, Teku Modisede. We, it's very clear that the infringement occurred inside the penalty area. Look at the uh, left arm of the player in red. And as it rolls forward, you will see that it's a deliberate push. And he actually shoves him right out of the penalty area. The infringement occurred inside the area. It was a foul. It was an infringement punishable by awarding of a direct free kick. And because it was inside the area, we then have to give a penalty. One out of one. Mm -hmm. Sure. Okay, one out of one. That's so there we have it. One out of one. That's one a penalty. One. Let's go to the Zungu one. While we've got the momentum going, let's go straight into the Zungu one. What did you pick up from that one? Okay, Rob, we've got to remember, is it inside? Yes. Is there an infringement? Those are the ingredients. Let's cook it. Okay. <laughs> hmm. Okay, we see there, there is an arm, a hand around uh, the shoulder there. He's pulling him. There's the referee. He's got a clear view. Look at the line. They are still outside. <coughs> Forget the ball. Look at them. Now, there is no hand from the Ajax player that is touching the Sundowns player. No hand, no contact whatsoever. And when that incident happened, they were still outside the penalty area. I wish we could go back to that one so that we can see at the moment where we freeze it contact. with no contact whatsoever, roll it forward, we can see the hand, it's touching him, he's pulling him back, we, he's still touching him but they are still outside. outside. Let's roll it forward a little bit and we'll see that in the next frame there, there is no contact whatsoever uh, that is being made by the X player and they are still outside the box. What happens next, whether the player goes on to fall inside or falls immediately outside is irrelevant. There is no infringement that takes place inside the box. Therefore, that penalty should not have been given. It should have been a free kick outside the box. Remember, Rob, we said that if he, he continues holding the player until they go inside the penalty area, only then do we give it as a penalty as opposed to a, 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 a foul, a kick, where he kicks him outside the penalty area and then he falls inside, we give it as a free kick outside the box. If he had continued holding him until they went inside the penalty area, then it would have been a correct decision. But he stopped holding him. And in fact, there was no contact whatsoever by the time he reached the penalty area line. So that one was no. incorrect, one out of two. Okay, all right, so one correct, one wrong. Shakes. Have you ever been conned before, Mr. Gass, whilst you were revving for FIFA and the KF? Because we, we did this game, uh, Jemas Nihil. Yeah, yeah no, was Nihil. No, Jemas Nihil, Jemas off. Uh, uh, this game, exactly the same game, Robbie. Uh, mm. You remember best now the whole tailor. Sure. Uh, I think we, we even said on Saturday that he conned the referee. He's from the doors up Yeah, but, but Brashe, Brashe, mm. if you look at his positioning, my only, my only concern is he, yeah. he had a very clear view. He saw the line, he saw the contact. What went through his mind as a referee then to make the decision knowing that the player was, 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 there was contact outside rather than inside the box? Well, uh, you know, to, to answer both questions, uh, you start Shakes, with the, the, one, the bigger question. I, I, I don't think that the referee was conned there. I don't think that uh, the player had any intention to, 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 to make it as if the infringement oh, happened. To do it, it doesn't matter, but at that moment mm. there, was, oh, there, there, there was no sort of action. Oh, okay. But it, it's really worrying. That, that's the, the, the decision that Victor took in that match. 
which was below his general standard. He's mm. a top-class referee. Top, top uh, class. Farouk is a top-class referee. He had a clear view. He could see the line in reference to the position of the players. He shouldn't have given that free <coughs> kick inside the penalty area as a penalty. Okay. <laughs> I think straightforward. And, and even people here, Temba and Dooley, is saying that Andil Ace Aldrin is cooking tonight, talking about <laughs> ingredients. I can see <laughs> Mechlomamba is salivating. You don't ask for names. When they make it, they name checks. You don't complain. I've got a lawyer. I'm sorry. All right, let's, let's have a look at uh, Ali's shirt. Now, there, there was something, I, I think we were in the studio when we were not too sure here. You obviously had a look at it. Talk me through it. Well, one of the most important aspects about refereeing, Rob, especially from a dead ball situation, is not to look at where the ball is coming from, but look at where the drop zone is and what's happening there. And, and I, as we roll this uh, clip, we'll, we'll see that there's a free kick being taken. The referee is there. Look at the Ajax player. Look at the Sundowns player. They are still apart. And they, they are together. And we will show you, we will actually magnify that and show you that at that moment, the Sundowns player had both arms on the Ajax player and pushed him down. And the referee was there. He had a clear view of the incident. He blew long before that ball was headed goalwards. Mm -hmm. And number 17, the culprit, the man down, is the one that was pushed. Brilliant decision to... Out of three. Mm. Ah, two out of three. Two out of three. We're chipping away. Give me your thoughts on uh, Twitter as well. I mean, we're going through all of this step by step, method by method as well. And we are, what, two correct, two one three. wrong. Now, let's find out about handling the ball. What's the situation? I Rob, know you've got a graphic for us as well. Rob, before we even go to the footage, we, we did this lesson uh, yeah. before on handling the ball. Mm -hmm. I want us to go and seek guidance from the laws of the game because this, this has got nothing to do with anybody's opinion. And it says handling the ball involves a deliberate act of a player making contact with the ball with his hand or arm. The referee must take the following into consideration and I've taken just three of those. The movement of the hand towards the ball, not the ball towards the hand. That's punishable. If there's movement of the hand towards the ball, then we punish it. We don't punish it when it's the ball towards the hand. Secondly, the distance between the opponent and the ball, leading us to say, did he have, have an, a, an expectation of where the ball would be? Thirdly, the position of the hand does not necessarily mean that there is an infringement. That does not come from me. That comes from FIFA. It right. comes from the laws of the game. I know that the, the arm momentarily held the ball against the body there, yes. but that's covered in the laws of the game. The position of the hand does not necessarily mean there's an infringement. Now let's see what happened there and break, it, break the footage down according to what the law says. Not according to what I say or mm. what anybody else has as an opinion. It's a Remember, FIFA law book. It's a FIFA law book and we're looking for a deliberate act. Let's have the footage and see what happens there. Okay. Right. Let's talk about the distance. Look at the distance there between those two players. Very short. The ball is moving at speed. There was no time for that player to plan that he is, he is not going to head the ball. He's going to miss it. Therefore, let me prepare my arm so that when the ball gets to me, I use my arm to play the ball. Let's roll it forward. Got held there momentarily, but I'm not interested in that for now. What I will show you is where those arms were. At that moment, he's got both arms in front of his face. Look at where the arm ends. It ends behind his body. So when the ball was moving, the arm moved from in front of the player to behind him. Mm. Was it moving towards or away from the ball, away. it was moving away from the ball. Now, that took away one of the ingredients for a punishable handball. In this instance, because the arm was always moving away from the ball, we cannot say that there was a deliberate intention on the part of the player to handle that ball. Mm. So that decision was incorrect. That penalty should not have been given.
Okay, I, th I think it, it, it's perfect because we dealt with this in the studio where it's ball towards hand or hand towards ball. And we've just had the explanation here that the hand was going away from the ball, the ball was coming towards the hand. So it wasn't the case of the other way around where ball's coming through and you are coming through this way. I'm explaining it graphically because sometimes these big terms are very confusing. you got a question uh, for us. I just want to say to Dubrais, also the eye contact. If you look at him initially, the player went up for the header, but the ball dipped. So obviously his eyes were not on the ball because if it was, he would have made contact with the head. Took a deflection of Ali Eskud's yes, uh, head. and it hit him yeah. on the head because he also went up for the head. So would eye contact be a factor as well? You've got, you've got a very valid point there. The, the indicator to the referee is, is the way the player bends his body forward and pushes his head to show that his intention was to head the ball. But, but you, can, you can tell just by looking at mm. what's happening there, Rob, that he had his eyes closed. Yeah. Mm. He had his eyes closed. My now, life. if you have a deliberate intention to use your arm, yeah. why would you close your why eyes? Why would you close your eyes? Yeah. Because you want to use your arm. Let but me, but me, regardless of that, the law is very clear. Since the the arm is, is moving backwards. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but uh, uh, are we there? I'm not in front of the world. There were a couple of spices that were so much. No, it's the Vardy. No, no, no. Now on two out of four. Two out of four of those to break it down. Yes. Okay. Now, before we even go away from this, and I love the interaction that we're getting from Twitter because as you are talking, I mean, Umfani is saying, Hi, Sia Funda, we're all I'm saying. So basically saying that we are learning for real today. But here's a question. Uh, there was an issue. Earl brings it up. He says, What about the issue of having the arms in their natural position? We've heard this term yeah. come up <laughs> from time to time. What's natural? What's unnatural? What's a natural position? I've never heard of or read of anything in the laws of the game in relation to a natural position. Mm. All I know is that the player came into the field of play with two arms. <laughs> there is no express requirements in the laws of the game that like a doll he must pull out those arms so that they never come into contact with the ball. That is why FIFA says it is not an offense in itself for an arm or a hand mm. to come into contact with the ball. What is an offense? is when there is a clear, deliberate act on the part of the player to use his hand or arm to play the ball or prevent it from being played by another player. All right, so here we are. We, we're sitting in a situation where he's got two right two and he's got two, two wrong. Two four. What's going to happen with the last one? What's going to happen with the last penalty? That will be the big icebreaker. Mm. You had to deliberate. Yes, on the Well, uh, I love <laughs> this last one because it is a direct contrast yeah. to the previous one. Because it's also an infringement relating to handling the ball. Now let's let's look and see if the the, the uh, primary ingredients. Look at the player uh, that's pointed by the arrow there. He he's, he's the one that really wants to defend the ball because he jumps first. Mm -hmm. Before everybody else, he jumps higher, but then look at his arm. He has moved his arm forward towards the ball. And as the ball comes, let's roll it forward, mm -hmm. he turns his body and uses his arm mm -hmm. to play the ball. Now, that is a very clear intention on the part of that player, even as the ball leaves the foot of the kicker. He moves his arm from behind his body, pushes it forward towards the ball, and even though he touches the ball when his body is already turned, and, and we need to apologize to our viewers that we don't have a better angle to show it, but mm. indeed he used the same arm that he pushed towards the ball, deliberately so, in order to prevent the ball from going to an opponent. And that's a correct decision, because that is a punishable handling of the ball because there was a deliberate act. The arm was moving towards the ball in, with the clear intention of using the arm to prevent the ball from being played or to move it in another direction. Perfect decision, three out of five. Three 